And let's check in with our NHL Network insider, David Peniola of the fourth period. Let's continue on the Jets theme, shall we? Because as we mentioned, they've seen a lot of change already. We saw Pierre-Luc Dubois departing, Blake Wheeler as well. What should we expect from them the rest of this offseason? Yeah, well, you know, their general manager, Kevin Sheveldayoff, is still open to looking at uh, potentially moving out a couple other star players. And Rupper just mentioned them. You know, you have Mark Scheifele, you have uh, Connor Hellebuck as two guys that on expiring deals that are attractive pieces to a number of different teams that are out there. And Connor Hellebuck kind of made it known, maybe uh, semi on purpose, um, semi accidental, that he's looking for a, a big ticket contract on his next deal, $9 million plus. And whether it's a short term, two, three year fix or it's a full, you know, seven, eight year term, he's looking for big money, regardless of, of what type of uh, years you're looking at. So for this particular player, that kind of scared off a few teams around draft time when they were engaged in those trade discussions. But as we get closer to the season, training camp starting in, in several weeks, we'll see what teams look at their goaltending and see if they want to make any uh, changes, modifications, or revisit those conversations. Mark Scheifele is going to be another guy to look at this, uh, for, for teams to look at at the center position. He has a 10-team no-trade list as part of his contract. Hellebuck, by the way, no no-trade protection. Uh, but Scheifele is a player that has a little bit of control. He's making just over $6 million in the final year of his deal. These are two players that they're willing to listen on still. Uh, and as we get past Labor Day, go into September and, and get closer to the training camps, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of those discussions start to revamp uh, in the next few weeks. Yeah, and one of those teams I bet is not on his uh, no trade list of 10 teams is probably the Boston Bruins because that seems like a pretty yeah. good destination. Rupper mentioned the fact that that could be a nice fit with the uh, team friendly number that Shifley has. So along those lines, the Bruins have seen obviously two franchise icons retire in the past month. How do you think that they're planning to replace guys like Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci? Yeah, I, I, the center position certainly is going to be an area of focus for the Boston Bruins. Now, they don't have a ton of cap space, and I believe there were discussions at least tire kicking anyway earlier on in the summer with respect to Shifley and, and uh, Boston GM Don Sweeney trying to see what that price tag is. I don't know necessarily if they're really poised to set, start the season with Coyle and Zaka at the 1-2 slot up the middle for them. Can they look at a, a additional options? Is it going to be a guy like Shifley? Do they look at Calgary, see what happens with Elias Lindholm? And Mikhail Backlund are one of those pieces, potential fits for the Boston Bruins if they can't agree to an extension uh, with the Calgary Flames. They're going to be looking at options and seeing what's out there. The other name I'll throw out as a potential option, and we're not likely to know really his future until we get closer to training camp, that's Jonathan Taves. Mm. Uh, he wants to make sure he's healthy. He wants to make sure that he's ready to go. He'd like to play a little bit more. But the Boston Bruins are a team that has been on Taves' radar going back to last season. Prior to when he made it known that he wasn't going to be able to uh, play for another team, he wanted to work on his, or, or focus on his health, rather. The Boston Bruins were a team that were interested in Jonathan Taves. I believe there's mutual interest, but again, priority is number one for him, uh, is his health, and then go from there. So Boston is going, certainly going to look at their options. Taves could be one of them, but also whether it's Shifley, Backlund, or, or another potential center, uh, Don Sweeney's got his work cut out for him over these next you know, a few weeks leading into camp, but he's going to be looking. Yeah, he sure does have his work cut out for him, but that's cool. I haven't heard the Taves news, and that would be very interesting if indeed that pans out, going from original six franchise to another one. Uh, Tomas Tatar also remains unsigned at this point. Where do you think he might play? Well, he's looking at multi-year deal, ideally, for him, and, and he has some options in terms of PTOs. Pittsburgh is one of them. We had some reports earlier this week kind of linking the two, but it looks like more on a professional tryout to see if he might be a, a fit for... Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins to add to their to their forward core. There are a few other teams that are looking at to kind of add to their middle six, second and third line, bring some secondary scoring in there. He could certainly provide that, but it's going to be considerably less than the $4.5 million cap hit he had over his last contract. It's going to take certainly a, 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 a dip in the dollars, um, and I think he understands that, but at the same time looking for that multi-year cushion rather than just the one year. Uh, so we're going to see what type of options become available to them. But there are teams that are looking to kind of add their secondary scoring, but they have to worry uh, about the salary cap. This may be a situation that goes into camp, and if he can't find a destination, uh, he may go on that PTO option, whether it's a team like the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Toronto Maple Leafs, or another club looking to add a little extra firepower to their mid-six.
And another big notable UFA that's still on the market is Patrick Kane. You know, we've been saying that he's still got plenty of game left in him. That's not the question. It's kind of where does he want to play? Who wants to pay him? So when do you think we might see him sign with a new team? Uh, I think this is another player going similar to Jonathan Taves. You know, Patrick Kane has to figure out his health and make sure that he's fully ready to go before he makes a decision. He's made it known that he certainly wants to play and he wants to play for a few more years moving forward. Uh, but he wants to make sure that he's got a strong timeline in place, a, 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 a suitable timeline in place, uh, so that he can be honest with teams with respect to his health. And it sounds like that's likely to come, at least having a good indication as to what that timeline is going to look like in the next four to five weeks closer to camp. By the time training camps get underway, uh, Patrick Kane should have an idea as to how long it's going to take him to get fully ready and back uh, to speed to to join an NHL club. So we're probably not going to hear anything of over uh, or major significance, I should say, with respect to Patrick Kane's future until we get closer to camp and then start to figure out what those options are. And the teams that had interest in him prior, and I'll throw kind of Boston sort of in that mix a little bit, but mm -hmm. more so Colorado, uh, the Dallas Stars that had a lot of interest in him, uh, the New York Islanders and a few others, they're going to look to see what that timeline looks like once we get closer to camp and can they make that cap situation work? Going to give teams a little bit of flexibility, but a little bit of work that they're going to have to figure out once we get camps underway in the middle of September. Yeah, still a lot to figure out over the next four to six weeks as we eagerly anticipate the new season. David, thanks so much for the time. Enjoy what's left of your summer. You got it. Thanks, Jamie.